This diary belongs to Nikki J. Maxwell. Private and confidential. If found, please return to me for reward. No snooping allowed. Rachel Renee Russell presents the Dork Diaries podcast. Brought to you by Simon and Schuster Audio. Episode 1. Saturday, August 31st. Sometimes I wonder if my mom is brain dead. Then there are days when I know she is. Like today. The drama started this morning when I casually asked if she would buy me one of those cool new cell phones that do almost everything. I considered it a necessity of life, second only to maybe oxygen. What better way to clinch a spot in the CCP, cute, cool, and popular group at my new private school, Westchester Country Day, than by dazzling them with a wicked new cell? Last year, it seemed like I was the only student in my entire middle school who didn't have one. So I bought an older, used phone super cheap on eBay. It was bigger than what I wanted, but I figured I couldn't go wrong for the clearance price of only $12.99. I put my telephone in my locker and spread the word that I had hot gossip about my new phone and that everyone could now call me. Then I counted down the minutes before my social life started heating up. You're hilarious. Want to come over after school? I got really nervous when two of the CCP girls came walking down the hall in my direction, chatting on their cell phones. They came right over to my locker and started acting super friendly. Hey, Nikki. How are you? Love your outfit. Sit with us at lunch today, okay? Um, okay. But deep down inside, I was jumping up and down and doing my Snoopy happy dance. Then things got really strange. We heard the hot gossip about your brand new iPhone. Everyone is dying to see it. Everyone, meaning the rest of the CCP crew. I was about to explain that I'd said I had hot gossip about my new phone, not the hot gossip is about my new iPhone, but I never got a chance because, unfortunately, my telephone started ringing. Very loudly. I was trying my best to ignore it, but both of the CCP girls were staring at me. Well, aren't you going to answer it? Obviously, I didn't want to answer it because I had a really bad feeling they were going to be a little disappointed when they actually saw my phone. So I just stood there praying that it would stop ringing. But it didn't. And pretty soon, everyone in the hallway was staring at me too. Finally, I gave in, snatched open my locker, and answered the phone. Hello? Mainly to stop that awful ringing. I was like, um, sorry, wrong number. And when I turned around, both of the CCP girls were running down the hall screaming. Make it go away! Make it go away! Make it go away! Make it go away! away! I guessed it probably meant they didn't want me to sit with them at lunch anymore which was really humiliating. The most important lesson I learned last year was that having a cruddy phone, or none at all, can totally ruin your social life. While millions of kids regularly forget their homework, not a single one would be caught dead without their cell phone, which was why I was nagging my mom about getting me one. I've tried saving up my own money to buy it, 
but that was impossible to do, mainly because I'm an artist and totally addicted to drawing. Like, if I don't do it every day, I'll go nuts. I spend all of my cash on sketchbooks, pencils, pens, art camp, and other stuff. Hey, I'm so broke. I have a milkshake on layaway at McDonald's. Nikki, Brianna, I'm home. Anyway, when mom came home from the mall with a special back-to-school present for me, I was pretty sure I knew what it was. She rambled on and on about how my attending a new private school was going to be a stressful time of tremendous personal growth and how my best coping mechanism would be to communicate my thoughts and feelings. I was absolutely ecstatic because you can communicate with a new cell phone, right? I kind of zoned out on most of what my mom was saying because I was daydreaming about all of the cool apps, games, and music I was going to download. It was going to be love at first sight. But after my mom finally finished her little speech, she smiled really big, hugged me, and handed me a book. I opened it and frantically flipped through the pages, figuring that maybe she had hidden my new cell phone inside. It made perfect sense at the time, because all the advertisements said it was the thinnest model on the market. But slowly it dawned on me that my mom had not gotten me a cell phone, and my so-called present was just a stupid little book. Talk about major heartbreak. Then I noticed that all the pages of the book were blank. I was like, oh no, she didn't. My mom had given me two things, a diary and irrefutable evidence she is, in fact, clinically brain dead. You're welcome, Nikki. Absolutely no one writes their most intimate feelings and deep dark secrets in a diary anymore. Why? Because just one or two people knowing all your biz could completely ruin your reputation. You're supposed to post this kind of juicy stuff online, on your blog, so millions can read it. Only a total dork would be caught writing in a diary. This is the worst present I have ever received in my entire life. I wanted to yell at the top of my lungs, Mom, I don't need a stupid book with 336 blank pages. What I need is to be able to communicate my thoughts and feelings to my friends using my very own cell phone. Wait, silly me. I keep forgetting. I don't have any friends. Yet. But that could change overnight, and I need to be prepared with a shiny new cell. In the meantime, I will not write in this diary again. Never Ever. Monday, September 2nd. Okay, I know I said I'd never write in this diary again. I meant it at the time. I'm definitely not the kind of girl who curls up with a diary and a box of Godiva chocolates to write a bunch of really sappy stuff about my dreamy boyfriend, my first kiss, or my overwhelming angst about the horrific discovery that I'm a princess of a small French-speaking principality and now worth billions. This is so not me. My life totally sucks. All day, I wandered around my new school like a zombie in lip gloss. Not a single person bothered to say hi. Most of the time, I feel invisible. How am I supposed to fit in at a snobby prep school like Westchester Country Day? This place has a Starbucks in the cafeteria. 
I wish my dad had never been awarded a bug extermination contract from this school. They can take their little pity scholarship and give it to someone who wants and needs it. Because I sure don't. Tuesday, September 3rd. It's way past midnight, and I'm about to freak out because I still don't have my homework done. I was really surprised to hear a knock on my bedroom door this late at night, and I assumed it was my six-year-old sister, Brianna. About a week ago, she lost one of her front teeth and buried it in the backyard to see if it would grow. She is forever doing crazy weird stuff like that. My mom says it's because she's still a little kid, but I personally think it's because she has the IQ of a box of crayons. As a little joke, I told Brianna the Tooth Fairy collected teeth from children all over the world and then superglued them together to make dentures for old people. What? Really? I explained that she was in big trouble with the Tooth Fairy, seeing as she had dug a hole and buried her tooth somewhere out in the backyard. Oh no! What should I do? The funniest part was that Brianna totally believed me. She actually dug up half of Mom's flower garden trying to find her tooth. Since then, Brianna has been paranoid that the Tooth Fairy is going to sneak into her room in the middle of the night and pull out all her teeth to make dentures. <laughs> but my prank kind of backfired because now she absolutely refuses to use the bathroom at night unless I first check inside to make sure the Tooth Fairy is not hiding behind the shower curtain or under the bath towels. And if I'm not quick enough, Brianna will have a little accident right on my bedroom carpet. But, but, what if the Tooth Fairy is hiding in there? <gasps> Oops. Unfortunately, I had to learn the hard way that, contrary to the TV commercial, Carpet Fresh does not remove all odors. But it wasn't Brianna at my door. It was my parents. Before I could say, come in, they just kind of barged in like they always do, which really irritated me because this is supposed to be my room. And I have a constitutional right to privacy which they keep invading. The next time my parents and Brianna come rolling up in here, I'm going to scream, Hey, why don't you people just move in? Anyway, my mom said, I'm surprised to see that you're still up doing homework. And my dad said, How are things going at school? It was really strange, because just as I was about to answer... I had a total meltdown right on the spot and burst into tears. <laughs> My parents were shocked and stared at me and then at each other. Finally, Mom hugged me and said, My poor little boo-boo. <laughs> which only made me feel worse. Not fitting in at school was bad enough. But now, I had to suffer the additional humiliation of being the only 14-year-old still being called Little Boo Boo. Suddenly, my dad's face lit up. Hey, I've got a great idea. We know you've been under a lot of stress lately with our move and your new school. I bet if we posted some positive affirmations all around the house, it would help you adjust. What do you think? I was like, okay, Dad. This is what I think. It's a stupid idea. Like sticky notes with corny sayings on them will solve my problem of being a total loser at school. You want to know what else I think? The article I read about bug extermination chemicals killing off brain cells is probably true. But I just said it inside my head. So no one else heard it but me. My parents kept staring at me, and it was starting to creep me out. Finally, after what seemed like forever, my mom smiled and said, Honey, just remember, we love you. And if you need us, we're right down the hall. 
They walked back to their bedroom, and for several minutes, I could hear muffled voices. I probably discussing whether or not I should be committed to a mental hospital right then or first thing in the morning. Since it was so late, I decided to finish my homework during study hall. I wonder if you still have to hand in homework when you're locked up in a psycho ward. Hi, this is Nikki. Thanks for listening. I hope you'll come back soon for the next installment in the Dork Diaries Tales from a Not So Fabulous Life podcast. And don't forget, the entire Dork Diaries series is available right now wherever books and audiobooks are sold. Read or listen to them today. <laughs>